Hello, my name is Nikki Lamb from the Meal Squire Society, and this presentation is on how to conserve your energy. This presentation will advance by itself. All you need to do is observe and listen. I will read and explain all the information as we go along. So for the purpose of this lesson, I'm speaking to energy as human energy. And energy, human energy, is the force needed in all human processing. Human beings are continuous processes, whether awake or asleep. We're using energy all of the time for our body to run itself. Some obvious processes are breathing, seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, circulating blood, digesting food, and eliminating waste. All of that takes energy. Less obvious processes are speaking, listening, thinking, and of course, feeling. So how do we increase our energy? How do we make the most of the energy that we have to be able to use and do what we need to do? Set your schedule so that you sleep at least seven or eight hours a night. Sleep is extremely important in managing energy. Avoid certain substances, alcohol, caffeine, and tobacco, and some stimulant medications may cause fatigue or make it worse. And some of them can even harm your health. Eat healthy food. The food that we put into our body is fuel, like the fuel we put into our car. If we put dirt, dirty or substandard fuel in the car, it wouldn't run as well. Same with our body. We need a balanced diet that includes plenty of fruit and vegetables. They may help stabilize your energy level. You need to avoid foods and beverages that are high in sugar and fat, though. They tend to have a lot of calories and little or no nutritional value. And just speaking for a moment to foods high in sugar, refined sugar I'm speaking to, like white sugar. For example, a donut's very high in, in uh, refined sugar. It can cause your blood sugar to shoot up and then your blood sugar can just drop suddenly way down. That really impacts um, your energy level. When your blood sugar's high, you feel almost hyper. And when it drops down, you can feel very, very, very tired. So you want to avoid spikes in your blood sugar by avoiding foods that are high in refined sugar. Stay hydrated. Dehydration can cause fatigue. So be aware of and drink plenty of water throughout the day. Dehydration can also cause many other things. For example, headaches. So if you have a headache, reach for a glass of water first before the Tylenol and the Ibuprofen. It may help. Manage your stress. When you're feeling stressed and anxious, that takes a lot of energy. So you need to manage your stress. Relax. Try deep breathing exercises or meditation and that will conserve your energy and not waste a lot of energy on being anxious. Energize with exercise. A lot of people find this kind of surprising, but exercise helps increase your energy. Regular light to moderate physical activity at least 30 minutes five times a week helps your body become more efficient when you're active or at rest. But remember, don't exercise just before bedtime because you don't want to feel active just before it's time to go to bed. Talk to your doctor before beginning any exercise program. When you feel really tired and you just want to lay down for a nap, try to go for a quick walk instead and you will find that you may feel more energized after the walk than you would have after the nap. Take care of your emotional health. Fatigue may accompany anxi anxiety, depression, or other mental health conditions. If you're feeling very depressed, you can feel like not wanting to get out of bed and feel extremely fatigued. If fatigue and emotional problems are affecting your ability to do daily tasks, please discuss this with your doctor. Review your prescriptions. Many medications, such as antihistamines and diuretics, may make you feel tired. Be aware of over-the-counter medications as well as prescribed medications. 
If a medication seems to be affecting you in this way, your doctor may be able to adjust the dosage or pre prescribe a different medicine. Track when you're tired. Keep a written log of your fatigue and review it with your doctor. So for example, maybe you become extremely fatigued at 11 o'clock every morning. Write that down. Or maybe you become really fatigued on Wednesday, and Wednesday's a horrible day of the week for you. Write that down. It sometimes can help determine the cause of the fatigue. So why do we need to use our energy wisely? Because we need to have the energy to do what we need to do. So living, walking, wheeling our chair, working, caring for children, whatever it is that we have to do during the day. And then we still want to have energy left over to do the activities we want to do, our leisure and recreational activities. So how do you do this? You need first to get to know yourself. Examine how you use your energy. Examine your works and tasks that you do throughout the day. So really think about what you do throughout the day. Are you completing a task in the most effective way, using the least amount of energy and the shortest time possible? Uh, for example, if you're cleaning your house and you're cleaning out the living room, and there's a lot of items in that living room that for somehow have managed to drift into the living room. This happens in my house. So you have to take all those items back to the rooms they belong in. So I find one item and I take it to the bedroom and then I come back and oh my goodness here's another item that needs to go to the bedroom. And I come back and I take a couple of things to my daughter's room and a couple of things to the bathroom. Well here's a third thing that needs to go back to my bedroom. The easiest way to minimize all of those extra trips to the bedroom is have a basket, put all the stuff that goes in one room in that basket, take them all at once. It's just a way of managing the energy needed to do that particular task. Conserving your energy and simplifying work is not being lazy. It's being smart. It's not what you do, but how you do it that helps control fatigue. Working with and understanding your fatigue is going to go a long way to helping your tolerance and helping you manage your energy. So basic principles of energy conservation. Plan ahead and prioritize. Respect your limits. Pace yourself. Alternate the heavy and light work tasks throughout the day. Use proper body mechanics. And if, whenever available, use adaptive or assistive technology devices. So for the first one, plan ahead and prioritize. Map your fatigue, as we said before, write down when you're tired and plan your schedule around that. If you're extremely tired at 11 o'clock every day, you're not going to plan a big event or a big meeting or an appointment for 11 o'clock that day. Be very, very aware of your fatigue and list the activities that need done most. Prioritize them. Plan activities for the time you have the most energy. And if you have a special event coming up some week, save your energy for it. Eliminate unnecessary steps and find helpful ways to get things done and determine which activities you're willing to accept help from others. Respect your limits. Stop before you become exhausted or in pain. It takes longer to recover after you're completely exhausted or in pain. Stop before that, that time. Pace yourself when you're doing your work. A moderate pace consumes the least energy. Slow and steady. It's, this is exactly like our car again. If you accelerate really quickly and then brake, accelerate, brake, accelerate, brake, it actually uses more fuel than if you went along at a steady, moderate pace. The same is true for us. Frequent short breaks are more beneficial than infrequent long breaks. So take a 10 minute break every hour instead of a one hour break every six hours. Use cues to remind you when to take the stretch break, rest break, or to change your activity. Alternate heavy work tasks with light work tasks throughout the day. So do the, the tasks that require a lot of energy with lighter tasks. So back to the houseworking example, if you need to do laundry and you need to run up and down stairs, do one load of laundry and then do a light task like dusting and then do the next load of laundry. Don't run it all up and down stairs at the same time. And sometimes we can't get everything we want done in one day. 
if you can't get it done in one day schedule according to the importance for the next day so if something's really important and needs to be done immediately schedule that for first the next day when you have most energy use proper body mechanics avoid stooping bending reaching uh, work mid range of motion so I'm going to talk a little bit about what is range of motion uh, if you are able to touch your hand to your shoulder and now stretch your hand as far away from your body as you can now you're bending at the elbow as far as you can bend at the elbow so from touching your shoulder to stretching right out that is the range of motion at the elbow joint so how far you can move the body part at that joint is range of motion you want to work in the middle so I don't want to be doing work with my hand on my shoulder that's when it's the tightest closed or when my arm is fully extended when the elbow is wide open those are hard areas to work in I want to work with my elbow slightly bent I'm stronger and it's safer alternate sitting and standing activities as possible sit to work when possible if you can do something when you're sitting it's 25 percent easier than when you're standing for example if you have to peel potatoes standing peeling potatoes is harder than sitting and peeling potatoes change your positions often and stretch often work at a comfortable height push or or slide objects instead of lifting them or place them on a movable trolley use a cart or a basket to carry items and save trips duplicate items used in more than one location a, a real good example of this is a phone now that we have uh, more portable phones if you take your phone with you or you have several phones in several rooms rather than running around looking the phone when it looking for the phone when it rings you have one handy in the room another example is if you need a notepad um, have a notepad in every room to write down things that you want to remember rather than running around looking for the notepad use adaptive or assistive technology or devices uh, there's lots and lots of assistive technology devices now um, basically it's equipment that helps you do something so equipment with uh, that uses power or adapting functions any of those and I've shown you some pictures the garden claw is just an adaptive way of uh, weeding your garden rather than bending over you can now do it standing much easier on the body saves energy in the top right hand corner that's actually opens jars my mom has rheumatoid arthritis and she isn't able to grasp the top of a jar and open it so she has that kind of machine all you do is slide the jar in close it down and it will actually twist the top of the jar off and in the bottom corner that's a simple battery operated can opener put it on top of the can push the button and it'll open the can for you it just saves that much energy so use these devices and how can you save energy when you're caring for yourself these are some examples of things you can do then choose combs or brushes or other self-care tools with large handles they're easier to grip that loses uses less energy use pipe insulation from a hardware store as and wrap it around the utensils of um, the handles of various utensils makes them easier to grip put a terry cloth bathrobe on and it'll if you can't dry your back it'll dry your back for you uh, use long handles on things your bath brush when you're scrubbing your feet or your back um, use a sake those little they kind of pinch at the end and you can pick up uh, things off the floor and pull your socks on um, using it so you don't have to bend over use a tub bench or a handheld shower install grab bars anything that's going to save you energy uh, for clothing select clothing that opens in the front select clothing with large flat buttons buy pants with elastic waistbands if you have a sore shoulder or hip um, put that uh, body part that's sore in first and take it out last out of the clothing use long shoehorns if bending over is difficult uh, as far as cleaning again organize your heavy and light chores throughout the day and the week to save your energy and to prevent increased pain and fatigue uh, just clean one room at a time or each day to avoid fatigue running back and forth between rooms and getting distracted and starting to clean the second room when you're midway through the first uses more energy 
use tongs or one of those um, reaching sticks with the pinchers on the end to pick up objects from the floor. Use lightweight long-handled spoons. Use long-handled sponge mops to wash the floor. Uh, casters on furniture legs will make it easier to move the furniture around. For kitchen work, as we shared earlier, sit to complete the activities if you can. Give yourself extra time for meal preparation and include rest periods. So if you're going to make a stir fry, chop your vegetables and then give yourself a half an hour to rest before you actually have to prepare them. Gather supplies needed before cooking and place them in your work area. Slide filled pans along the stove or countertops to avoid lifting and or use both hands and carry the objects together and items more frequently used in easier to reach places. Eliminate unnecessary steps, so let the dishes air dry. Uh, eliminate scouring by soaking your pots. For shopping, use a bundle buggy to bring the food home. If you're carrying your groceries, only load the bags half full. Shop at non-peak hours. Avoiding people and maneuvering around a crowded store uses a lot of energy and use store delivery services where available to avoid carrying parcels if shopping is difficult to do. Uh, for moving, walk at a comfortable pace. Uh, sitting or standing, use good posture and avoid slouching or twisting. When you're carrying objects, hold your body straight and hold the object close to your body in the center of your body, kind of over the pelvis. It'll be easier to carry. And your quote for this lesson, Energy and Persistence Conquer All Things by Benjamin Franklin. This concludes our presentation on conserving energy. If you have any questions on this presentation, please do not hesitate to contact your assigned facilitator.